This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the final lecture on inventor control. Uh, and it, uh, it's about what we call reorder levels and also safety inventories. Um, and it's paragraph eight or section eight um, of this chapter. And what it relates to is this. If you think back to the earlier lectures on um, economic order quantity, if we were ordering, let's say, 5,000 each time, I've drawn this little graph several times, but if we looked at the level of inventory over time, we say, oh, we start with 5,000. Uh, customers are, are we selling them to customers so the level falls down to zero? Then another order comes in of 5,000, then back to zero, and so on, which is an appalling graph. Anyway, you've seen it enough times. However, there's just one thing here. We, in real life, you can't wait until the inventory falls to zero to place an order because there's going to be a delay always before we receive the order. I mean, the order's unlikely to arrive instantly. It may take two or three days for the supplier to deliver. And so if you've waited until it fell to zero before you placed your order, and it takes three days for it to, to arrive, you're going to be left for three days with no inventory at all. Then you get your 5,000. And then you have to wait three days again for the order and so on. And of course, during those three days when you've no inventory, Customers are still wanting the goods, but you can't supply them. And all right, they may wait and come back three days later, or of course, they may go to another supplier uh, and we lose the sales. And so I think fairly sensibly, the way around that is if you know that it's going to take three days to deliver, you don't wait until the inventory falls to zero you place the order a bit earlier. You'll say, oh, oh, in three days, customers are likely to want 200 units, let's say. So let's place the order when there's still 200 units left. We've placed the order. Three days later, the inventory is dropped to zero. And immediately, the order comes in. So that's what we're talking about in real life. Surely, you won't wait until you've nothing left to place an order. You'll order when you've still units left. And I made up figures here and said 200, but we call that the reorder level. It's the level of inventory when we place a new order. And so let me show you what I mean. The calculations here, as so far as they are, are very easy, provided you understand what I'm getting at. But let's look at a couple of examples. First of all, example five. A company has demand from customers of 100 units per week. The time between placing an order and receiving the goods is five weeks. And we call that the lead time. I don't need to write down the definition because it's there. The lead time is the time it takes between placing an order and actually receiving the goods. So here it takes five weeks before we actually get them. It says, what should the reorder level be? So as I just explained, how many units do we need to still have an inventory when we place the order to avoid running out? Well, surely, if it takes five weeks to get the goods, we need to have enough left when we place the order uh, to be able to supply customers in five weeks. And if the demand is 100 units a week, well, we need to order, we need a reorder level. Five weeks it'll take. Customers are demanding 100 a week. 
So we need to reorder only 500 units left. Be careful on your words. In the earlier lectures, we were looking at the reorder quantity. How many will we order each time? Here, I'm not looking at how many we're placing the order for. We could do E or Q calculations on the economic order quantity calculations. Here, nothing to do with it. It's simply how many do we still need left in inventory when we actually place the order? And we need enough to keep being able to supply customers over the lead time between the date the order is placed and when we're going to receive the goods. All right, let's move on though. Uh, that's all nice and straightforward, I hope, except in practice, you're never going to be certain of how long it will take them. You know, we might take them about five weeks, but you know, maybe it might take slightly longer, slightly shorter. Or oh, even if we were sure it was going to take five weeks, the de uh, customer's demand, it might be on average 100 units a week, but you know, some, sometimes the demand may be a bit higher, sometimes a bit lower. So if we were to start a uh, reorder when we had 500 units left, that should on average be okay. But there could be times when customers wanted a bit more than 100 uh, a week and we'd still end up running out. And so to be safe, we may decide to reorder when we've got a bit more than we think we'll need. Look at example six. A company has a demand from customers 100 units a week. The time between placing uh, an order and receiving the goods, the lead time is five weeks. But we have a policy of holding safety inventory of 100 units. So although, you know, essentially it's the same exam example as number five, we should be okay ordering when we have 500 units left. Just in case things go wrong, maybe it'd be a good idea to order when we have a bit more. And so the amount we'd order here the reorder level. It would be the amount we think we're going to need, 500, the same reasons as before, five weeks, 100 a week. But just to be safe in case things, you know, there was a delay or something, uh, we'll make sure that we reorder when we have 100 more than we think we need. We'll reorder when we have 600 units left. And so when the new order comes in, on average, we still have 100 units left there. But it's nice to have that extra 100 units throughout the year, just in case something goes wrong. That extra 100 is called the safety inventory. Or less common, but another word is the buffer inventory. Safety or buffer. Example seven, a bit of a variation here. Demand from customers is uncertain and is between 70 and 120 units a week. So instead of just talking about an average here, it's anything between 70 and 120 units a week. The lead time is uncertain. And that's between three and four weeks. And it says, what would the reorder level have to be if we are never to run out of inventory? Well, surely if we, if we want to make sure we never run out, we're going to have to um, reorder when we've enough to cover the worst that can happen. Surely the reorder level What's the worst that could ever happen? Uh, well, as far as the lead time is concerned, the worst it could be is four weeks. So the maximum lead time, four weeks. So if we're never gonna run out, whatever happens, we're gonna have to make sure we have enough to last us four weeks. 
As far as the demand pool is concerned, well, again, the worst that can happen is the maximum demand here per week, which is 120. And so I've got plenty of times we won't need that many. If we want to make sure we never, ever run out of inventory, we're going to need to reorder when we've 480 units left. So again, arithmetically, obviously, very easy. But I hope it's making sense. And obviously, read the question carefully. Just one more thing, though. Although that's the worst that could happen, four week lead time, and a demand of 120 a week, and therefore 480 units when we reorder, um, makes it certain we'll never run out. There'll be plenty of times, you know, it's the worst that can happen, but there'll be plenty of times when the lead time will be lower. The lead time might only be three weeks. So although I ordered when I had 480 left, we wouldn't actually need them all. Uh, and equally, the demand per week. The worst thing happens is it's 120, but some weeks it might only be 70. And so either way around, there will be times when we've placed an order for four, uh, sorry, we placed an order when we've 480 left, but didn't need to use them all, so there was still some of them left when the new order arrived. An example eight, Demand from customers is uncertain, it's between 70 and 120 a week. The lead time is uncertain, it's between three and four weeks. And we reorder our order quantity, we order a thousand each time. And it says, what's the maximum inventory level going to be? Ah, we already know our reorder level is 480. I said a minute ago, there are going to be plenty of times when we don't need all 480 and that we've still got some left when the new order arrives. What's the minimum demand over the lead time? The minimum we're going to need is the minimum lead time of three weeks. times the minimum demand per week. Uh, which was 70. So the maximum we're going to need is 480. That's why I reorder when we 480 left. But the minimum we'd uh, need on occasions, all we'll need is 210 units. Now think about this. If you reorder when you've 480 left, if they demand 480, then the, when the new order arrives, the level would drop to zero. Sorry, if I make it more clear. Um, we reorder when we've still 480 left. Sometimes we will need all 480, drops to zero, and then the new order comes in with a thousand. Other times we won't need all 480. So we reordered when we 480 left. But it may be that uh, while we're waiting for the order, customers only, we only need 210 units. And therefore there are still some left when the new order arrives. And he says, what's the maximum inventory going to be? Well, surely, the most that could be left when the new order arrives Well, we were reordering when we had 480 The worst that they're going to have, the best, you know, whichever way you look at it, uh, but the minimum uh, demand over the lead time was 210. And therefore, 
the most that could be left when the new order arrives uh, of the difference of 270. The new order arrives and the order quantity is a thousand. And so our maximum possible inventory level is the 270, that uh, the maximum that could be left, plus the thousand in the order, the order quantity, so 12, uh, yes, 1,270. That's the most that we could ever have in the inventory. So have a think about those. As I say, all of those arithmetically are easy. But, you know, the more it makes sense, um, the less it's a question of actually learning, apart from the terminology. So we've done a lot in that chapter. Economic order quantity, uh, dealing with discounts, economic batch quantity, reorder level and safety inventories. Have a look back, work back through the examples, uh, check you are happy. And then, as always, have a go at the, um, the online test, where there are five or six multiple choice questions. Good.